to Tea with Tracy. Come and see you live every Tuesday at 12. Spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate and home ownership related. Today, we are going to be talking about estates, estate cleanouts. Um, I'm sure all of us at some point have had to um, help with a loved one's home and getting that cleared out for one reason or another when they're getting ready to, to leave that home. And joining us today, I have founder and owner of Full Circle Estate Cleanouts, Pablo Ortego, to talk about a new way that we can clean out these homes that also gives back to the community. Without further ado, let's get Pablo on to join us. Hey, good. How are you, Pablo? Good, good. What's happening, Instagram Live? Good. Oh, well, we're just very happy to have you join us today on this rainy Tuesday. We're getting those... Uh, <laughs> April showers a little bit delayed as we were heading yeah, we into are. May here, but uh, oh, we are. the teams are feeling that too. It's uh, it's nasty days to work when yeah. that's when it's like this, but yes, but hey, we're getting closer, right? Yes, closer all those sunny days, absolutely. And and the, the flowers are going to start to bloom and the grass is getting greener, so um, not yeah, going to complain about the, the rain coming in, it's a good thing, so. <laughs> Um, I agree, I agree. Yeah. So so today we are going to be talking a little bit about um, cleaning out. So some of us have had to deal with um, helping to clean out a loved one's home or condo or um, sometimes it's just our own, right? We just have a lot of stuff and we're ready to move on if we're downsizing. And um, what a lot of people, their first thought is an estate sale. Oh, I need to have an estate sale and someone come in and let's, you know, see what we can sell. Um, but what a lot of people don't know is that estate sales, there's, they have a lot of requirements. Like there are minimums that you need to have. And if you don't have enough stuff, they're going to bring stuff into your home, which is kind of the opposite of what, of what you want to accomplish, right? You want to get things moved out. Um, so that happens, or sometimes what happens is a lot of things gets, you know, can get cleared out and thrown into the trash, right? Thrown into, um, you know, our garbage heaps that are, are continually rising. And um, so you've started a better way to do clean outs of estates and, and homes. And um, it's something that is not only eco-friendly, but it gives back to the community. So tell us a little bit about what, what you do. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And you, and you kind of nailed it with the uh, estate sale thing, you know, that's kind of how all this started. I had the opportunity to see the clean out process myself. Um, last year, I was doing some videography for an estate sale company, and I realized that after the estate sale, there is still a lot of stuff. And it kind of brought some curiosity to, to what people do with that, you know, what are companies doing. Right. One thing I noticed is that most things were just designated as junk right away. Mm -hmm. You know, as soon as the house, the estate sale was done or somebody was transitioning out of the, the space, everything's junk. Right. And in my mind, the place that I come from, you know, I come from a place where kids used to play in the same river that their moms washed their kids clothes in, you know? So yeah. for me, uh, it's always been a touchy subject getting rid of things that can still be valuable to people. So the business model is all revolved around making sure that these good items that are in people's homes that somebody else would designate as junk, they actually get to somebody whose life could be improved, whose quality of life could be improved. And we have a lot of people like that here in the United States that yeah. we can pass all this stuff along to. Um, I love that. The model is, yeah. go ahead. No, I said, I love that. I love that because there's, I, I mean, most is not junk, right? Like there are so many things that we can continue to use and it can be loved and appreciated. Even if yeah. it's not, you know, if it's past the time with us that there are others that can use it. And vice versa. Exactly. Sometimes it might be somebody, what somebody else isn't using anymore that we can use. So yeah, yeah. and like the the most, um, you know, some somebody you wouldn't expect to use it too. Like all of our linens and towels, they actually go to Habitat for Humanity, where they use them for the pups. You know, that's yes. it's uh, it might not it, it might not make somebody's life crazy, uh, you know, uh, advantageous and really improve the quality of life. But even something that small that goes to a nonprofit. Uh, that helps push their mission. I mean, that's what community is all about. That's what charity is all about. Yes, absolutely. Yes, there's, yeah, Habitat for Humanity. I know another local one is the Canine Rescue. They welcome yes. sheets and towels and because they're mm -hmm. always needing them for 
for the dogs and the animals. Absolutely. So, and as you yeah. can imagine, every house has some of that stuff. Yes. You know, every time I do a clean out, there's at least three closets full of towels that, <laughs> you know, were just recently washed and they can be, they can be passed along. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. And yeah, and, and you know, on the topic of clutter in people's homes, uh, it's pretty wild. A lot of people don't understand that uh, most, or right now, the average house has 300,000 items in their home. Wow. And that number is astronomical. That it's is 300,000. Uh, it makes me want to go start counting, right? <laughs> I know, right? You yeah. Know? And then it's crazy because when I do a clean out as well, most houses after an estate sale, they still have anywhere between 20 to 50 pieces of furniture still. Wow. Now, wow. obviously, that includes everything from small side tables to big dining room tables, but that's a lot. You really yeah. don't think about it until you are walking around your house counting. Yeah. And, um, you know, in the past 50 years, the size of people's homes have tripled. So just imagine that compounding effect. If it's tripled in 50 years, it's probably going to double at least within 20 years, yeah. which means that 300,000 is going to climb to 350,000. Oh it's gosh. just an accumulation that when you really th sit down and think about it and not get political and not get, uh, right, right. you know, eco-friendly, like still it's scary. Yeah. I just pictured my, uh, my grandkids just sitting around a pile of stuff. That yeah. They don't really, you know, it's terrifying. That is, that's a lot. That's a lot of stuff. I, I know I've kind of been on a kick lately to try and, um, you know, clear through and like figure out like what do I really use and love in my home and what's just kind of there so right. yeah right yeah and I heard one of your uh one of your Instagram lives from a few weeks ago uh with a design company and they were saying you know start figuring out how to make the things in your home be useful yeah and if it's not useful why even have it in there you exactly know? why right we're saying brilliant, why? Yeah. which is really why have Absolutely. it in there and then you know, to add to that, when people do start removing things from their homes, they uh, they still want to keep it. And I respect that. Mm -hmm. But there is an uh, there's an issue right now in the United States. We have so many storage facilities. We have so many storage facilities that every American could have their own 7.3 foot storage area. And every American could sit inside one of those. That's how many storage facilities we wow. have that everybody could have a roof over the heads and 7.3 uh, feet to stand on. Um, there are more storage facilities than Starbucks. Hold on. Starbucks what? McDonald's. That seems hard Subway to believe. Combined. Really? Look combined. at this combined. <gasps> Look at this thing. Wow. We are storing I'll, that I'll sure much test, stuff. It's so much stuff. And I'll make sure I put a, I'll give you the link to put on the description so yeah. people can see that. Cause it, it really opens your eyes to the, the issue because it really yeah. is an issue um yes. we don't yeah. need that much stuff we uh we accumulate so much that we need extra space i feel like we're creating a or creating a solution while creating another problem which right. for me it just doesn't make sense right um it's, it's yeah. truly scary and if anything um you know, if anybody takes anything from this whole talk, yeah. <laughs> all it should be is don't get a storage unit. Please, right. <laughs> please don't get a storage Right, right. Make some decisions. Don't get the storage unit unless it's, you know, a temporary, hey, I'm going to be making a move, need, need a place to put things. But, but right, don't have exactly. a permanent storage unit just to store stuff. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Oh. And about that, don't have two storage units. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that all the time. I've wow. got four storage units with all this cool stuff. Oh my gosh. It's like, man, it can't be that cool. Like, yeah. It's not in your house. It can't be that cool. Right, <laughs> right. If it was that cool, you'd have it like where you get to enjoy it and see it and or use exactly. it. Yes. Yep. So exactly. Yep. Well, and I know another, um, you know, something that's kind of been a you know, a topic lately and I've had on um, you know, kind of a holistic healthy living expert on Valerie Pence. She's been on and I've had, um, I've had uh, Uniquely Yours, L from Uniquely Yours, where we can use furniture, like furniture pieces that, you, you know, you might take a look at it and it looks outdated, but you can upscale that. You can reuse that. And something with some of the newer, like pieces of furniture and things that are coming out, they, they let off some there's like toxins, right? From what they use in creating it. So not only can we reduce the stuff, but we can reuse some of the pieces. You can give it a whole new look and feel and have it be something that's healthy for your home that you love again, or maybe it goes to somebody else who they give it the new look and feel and it fits in their space. 
so, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a huge repurposing, reselling community out there that really pushes our mission along the mission mm-hmm. of recirculation because that's the whole point. Right. Um, you know, you take something that once had life, you give it new life, and you give it a new story. Right. Uh, a lot of people are 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 going towards that way. A lot of my customers, because I my my business is a bit multi dimensional, and I do have a showroom, and I have a lot of uh, younger people that come in. They're all saying the same thing. Yeah. I didn't want something IKEA. I didn't want something cheap and weak. I want right. something that's going to last me for a while. You know, we've got. Absolutely. I, I I don't know the stats on the real estate side, but I see a lot of younger people buying houses right now. Oh yeah. Beautiful, yep. The millennials are the largest demographic right now purchasing oh. homes. Yep. Incredible. Uh, by it's far. Better. Yes. And, and and they appreciate uh craftsmanship yes they appreciate craftsmanship and like you were saying too they're creative they do know how to take the stuff and uh when it's not broken you know they they don't have to fix it they just paint it a little bit you know add a little shellac on it yeah. and it's a whole new dress <laughs> yeah it's brand you know, and that, new and that helps a lot of different ways too um obviously the whole waste thing and not mm-hmm. ending not those those things not ending in the landfill uh, but also they're not ending in a storage facility. So, Absolutely. You know, it's a win-win when people have that mentality. Yes, I love it. And so give us just the quick, like, lowdown. So when you come into a home, um, you, you, you're you removing the items, and then what are what's happening with them from there? Yeah, absolutely. So right when my team goes in, they already have a checklist of items that our donation partners are looking for. Uh, We work with all the big donors around uh, Metro Detroit area, as well as some smaller churches and smaller organizations. They all have lists online that you guys all have access to. They give us access to to a more detailed list of things they're looking specifically. But so we enter the house, we identify what's in there. We immediately start taking all the donation items out. So any glasses, uh towels linens like we were talking yep. uh, we identify all the furniture pieces that shouldn't be retired uh, because believe it or not there are some old pieces that do just need to be thrown out you know it's, right. it's just part of the right game. beyond repair um, yes. yep <laughs> exactly exactly so during uh during the donation process we're boxing everything up getting everything into our transport truck and then sending all the smalls to our local donation partners and that includes um like i said the churches but also salvation armies and goodwills we want to make sure everybody gets a piece of the pie. Yep. After that, uh, after after the smalls get donated, the bigger items come to the, our warehouse facility where we uh, we do put a price tag on everything. Uh, everything is 75% off market value, and it sits in our showroom where the general public has an ac- has access to these items if they need them. And also our donation partners stop by um, on a weekly basis, and they pick up okay. the items that they need for the cases that they're working on. Okay. So it's all donation based. That is like that is the bulk of the job. The rest of the job is just going into the house and removing all the right. unwanted items, retired items. And, right. Uh, and that's an easy process, as you can imagine. It's just in and out of a house a thousand times or three hundred thousand yeah. times right. if you take things individually. Right. Um, oh, which is that's yeah, that's, that's a lot of work, and I know it's overwhelming for so many. And I know I've passed along your information. Um, you know, to some clients that, you know, they're just, what do I do? You know, they don't even know. Sometimes when it's, they're not your things, you don't know, like what, what is something of value? What is something that someone else can use? You know, Mm -hmm. what is something that maybe is past its prime and it's, you know, time to retire it. Um, So it's nice to have somebody be able to come in and have that, um, you know, have that information and that expert opinion to say, Hey, here's, here's what somebody else can use and is actually looking for. So. Right. Exactly. And, and you know, there's a lot of education to that because everybody has nostalgic items. Everybody has things in their house that they just can't let go of, or they just have a, a sense of value that isn't realistic to anybody else, but them. And that's fine. You know, that's their reality. It's theirs. It's, it's, uh, it's beautiful to them, but that's why we have prepped ourselves and have talked enough to our donors uh, to know how to communicate that communicate that what a lightly used item is you know that you can't just put your 1970s uh you, you know uh what, what would it be 1970s <laughs> coffee maker anything right like that, right coffee maker yeah yeah to donate, right you know, it seems like it would have good val- good value or improve somebody's quality of life but um but that's why the education is important because that process that you're talking about too when somebody goes in and tries to do it by themselves or take up to 
you know, up to a month, up to a couple of months right. for somebody who doesn't have the know-how or that, exactly. that, that education. Uh, the other advantage with us too is we immediately get the stuff to our donation partners. During, during COVID, most donation companies stopped picking up mm-hmm. and they stopped intaking so much because they actually – um, they grew their inventory a, a ridiculous amount. A lot of people wanted to become minimalists during, uh, right, during right. COVID, which yes. was a, a beautiful thing. Right. But uh, the, the donation companies had to put a stop to things for a while. And yeah. we can go into a house after we get contracted and take the stuff and get it to the donation company. You don't have to wait two weeks, two months, yeah. um, which is another great tip. If you do plan on donating stuff, the best way is to drop it off if you can. And if you can't, schedule that as early as possible because the donation companies are very, very behind on, on all their pickups. And okay. they still want the stuff. You know, it's the, they right. still need it. Uh, we just have to be patient with them. Um, or you hire a company like ours who wants to make sure the items get to those places. All right. Well, that's that's a great tip. So you can either drop things off yourself or if you are waiting for a pickup, if you're, if you're you know, not leaving your home, not going anywhere, and you're just looking mm-hmm. to see – you know, some things that you're not using anymore that you think might be able to go to a, a great home. And there's a lot of other, not just the big ones, but there are a lot of local organizations too who can get, um, you know, get the items and put them directly into a home within your community, in our community. So um, we can provide you with some of those those names as well. So, well, thank you so much for joining us, Pablo. I appreciate you. I appreciate you joining us. I appreciate what you're doing. I just, I think it's fantastic that, you know, we're able to, you know, reuse these items, um, bring them to life, you know, some things that somebody cherished that somebody else might be able to. Um, I just think that that's fantastic. So. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. It's super rewarding. It's, it's, it definitely has a heart of its own, this company. And, uh, it's way bigger than I am. So if anybody wants to learn more or be a part of it, just follow me. And uh, I hope to put out a lot more tips like this and education and information so we can uh, we can fill our houses up responsibly. That sounds great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, thank you for having me, so, Tracy. This was amazing, and I love the show. It's, it's, it's uh, amazing what you do for the uh, community here. Well, thank you so much. I love bringing on business owners like you who have – great ideas and, you know, doing things that are new and that benefit our community and others. And so thank you so much. And I hope, uh, hope to have you on again. We'll have you on again on a future episode. So we'll have to do that. We'll have to do that. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. You guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. Sounds great. Thanks so much. And we'll see you all All next week, Tuesday on Tea with Tracy. Bye-bye.